What's got four thumbs and liked Kennesaw State last night? This show right here. This show right here. A 3-0 and sweep. A 3-0 and sweep. We said it had been too long. What are you doing? Uh, we brought out the broom yesterday. 3-0 and sweep. Also had Jacksonville State's team total over. That went over by half a point. Uh, yep. And Zeno, you hit you hit the over in the NBA. That Hawks Nets game. What a fun sweat that was. Once the game went over, they proceeded to score 13 points in the last 20 seconds to make it look like it was yeah. an easy winner. We'll take it though. <laughs> and today it. we needed okay, that three. Off the the record. Record. We needed that three. We, did. we were stuck on the Schneid at two and one forever. And then I think we had back to back one or two days. Bad, bad. But we brought it right back to where the morning wager is supposed to be. At the top of the leaderboard, at the top of the best shows on this network, at the top of everything, we are the top. We are the we are the pinnacle of uh, sports wagering, or something like him. that. Forty nine. We are him. Yeah, we are him. Uh, them for I don't know. Forty nine and twenty nine run on the show. And Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe today will be the first ever three sport edition of the morning wager we're going to cover nfl college football and the nba like, why, i don't like, know i'm trying to say things. Right. you know what you know what gets your play i don't care what are you gonna talk about the What's nfl the rams about? and the vikings you're, you're, you're making things sound grand that aren't grand oh my god the fact that we were talking about three different sports on the sports betting show is absolutely maniacal when they're playing all four sports tonight i mean what, what are we doing here just you know it's, it's not that big of a deal. You can really just look at it. Look at how sad you are. You're so pathetic. See? Yeah. I mean, just, just don't cause that to happen and we'll be fine. Okay, let's move on to my half of the double play, which involves one of the three sports we'll be talking about on the show in the NFL. Yeah, Vikings, Rams, Thursday night football. Uh, look, the Rams are getting back one key piece of their offense, and that is Cooper Cup. Now, this changes the offense dynamically, and Cooper Cup clearly, it looked like he was able to play last week, but uh, Sean McVay announced very early in the week that he was going to play. So he's practiced all week long, which is a short week. There's no denying it. In the two games he played this year, the first game of the year, guys, he had 21 targets and 14 receptions for 110 yards. In the second game he played when he got injured, through about a quarter and a half, he had six targets, four receptions for 37 yards. At home, he is very good in his career. When you look at his numbers uh, for what he's typically done, his last two home games, he had at least uh, 10 targets, and he went over 101 of those two. I think the other one, he ended up around 58. But at 66 and a half, 67 and a half, depending on where you shop around for this number with Cooper Cup, I expect Matt Stafford to find him early and often uh, to make this offense go. The Vikings are a team that likes to blitz, uh, and Brian Flores is very aggressive. Well, what does that do? Mm. That gets Cooper Cup in quick routes out of the slot. Ball gets released quickly and take off. So the Rams, who I think have a good chance to win this game, they're not going to be able to do it without Cooper Cup being a big part of this offense. I think he gets it done tonight. First game back. i will have the requisite target share needed, and I think he goes over the 66-and-a-half PP. You're still sitting. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. There, yeah, there we go. Okay, that was one of the three sports we're talking about today, well, which apparently is a stupid now. thing to bring up. Uh, I will. Okay, but smash that like button if you roll in with Zinno there and Cooper Cup up and over his receiving yards prop. Uh, Zinno, there are uh, look. Kennesaw State is kind of something maybe you know associated with my repertoire. Just taking a hideous underdog. Uh, yesterday that was a great show best bet. But for my half of the double play today, there are on-brand plays for BP. And then there is taking the Washington Wizards plus 13 and a half against the Boston Celtics. Uh, we're going to do it. And you can call me crazy, but I don't think the Boston Celtics are going to make 29 threes again like they did the other night, Mark. I just, mm -hmm. uh, I, that, I, I feel very strongly about that. And I, I know Washington's going to be terrible this season. We're all aware of that as well. But check this out, man, okay? Teams playing their season opener, like the Wizards are, against a team that's already played one game, like the Celtics have. The team playing its season opener, 11-3 ATS last 14, perfect 6-0 ATS last two seasons. This is just the fifth time in the last 30 years that a team is a double-digit dog in its home opener. 
I have to take the Wizards on sheer principle. They're a bad team. They might be the worst team. The Celtics are probably the best team. 13 and a half, though, in an October NBA game. Come on. We got to take the points, don't we? Uh, I mean, I would agree. I mean, just the, 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 the lack of a better way to phrase it, like after the high of getting the rings and then smoking the New York Knicks like a cheap cigar. Uh, and yes, yes. And then having to go play the lowly Pistons. I mean, again, this is one of these also games where for me, like, you know, I, I, I in my head sometimes would want to cut this in half and just take, take it in the first half where the Pistons may keep it close. Um, and, and probably maybe even have Wizard. a lead at half. Wizard, when I say Pistons, sorry, they're both bad. <laughs> Wizards keep it close. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could see conceivably both because if Boston isn't covering early, they're probably not covering late, especially with this number. But I could see Boston coming out very, very flat to start this game. Uh, you, you mentioned the Pistons, so I'd be remiss if I'd say they blew another lead. My God, a new season, same as the old season last night, gagging against Indiana. Thoughts and prayers to anyone who had Detroit last night. All right. We've talked about the NFL. We've talked about yes. the NBA. Our best yes. bet is in college football. Uh, oh, that's three ho- hopefully it's as good oh, as saw. Yeah, there is. My God, how many more are there? I, I heard they're playing the NHL. The NHL is in action. Yeah. The Europa yes. League is in action. By the way, I don't no, know who this is. I am no not cares. two and nine in my no last 11 soccer. soccer plays. That guy is, no one is cares. out to lunch. No one cares. Anyway. I'm telling you, no one okay, cares. You know what? <laughs> Can I speak now, please? Yeah, I was ahead, going sure. to give you credit. I was going to give you effusive praise. Effusive praise. That's right. You haven't effusively praised me yet today. Well, that's because you've been taking a dump on me for the for about seven minutes. Okay, it's kind of hard to. Same. All right, Al? I get effusive okay. praise or take a dump on you in my world. That's the same. Yeah, they're the same. I get equal pleasure from both of them. All right. Well, you tweeted yesterday that yes. you believe that you set the over under on four. Undefeated teams going down in well, college football. Three and a half. Yeah. I, re- I took the over. Oh, three and a half was three and a half, but three you took the over. I, yes. I replied to your tweet. By the way, you can find him at Mark Zinno on Twitter. You can find me at Brian Power underscore wins. I, re- I replied to you. That sounds aggressive. Well, and I you look kind of smart that you are aggressive. aggressive. Which, yeah, <laughs> you are aggressive. And guess what? All of a sudden, yeah. your bet's looking a little good because we lost an undefeated. I, we And one that no one thought is Liberty loses outright as a near four-touchdown favorite to Kennesaw First State. Okay, ever FBS win by Kennesaw State. That's close to you, right? Kennesaw State, few, uh, yes. a stone's throw, About if you will. 25 minutes northwest of me. They had to be handled. It's written Kennesaw Mountain. Kennesaw, like Kennesaw Mountain Landis, the guy who came up with the uh, – the, is that the Cy Young or the MVP? That's the MVP trophy. The kid he was like the, the first the, commissioner of baseball. Yes. Yeah. Kennesaw Mountain Landis, whatever his name is. Anyway. So that's a good no name. history lesson. You probably would rip on it. Okay. Anyway, let's get back. Let, let's bring it full circle here to the Thursday game. One undefeated has already fallen this week, so there's only nine left. One of them is the Pitt Panthers, who are in action tonight, hosting Syracuse. You and I have been talking about this game quite a bit during the week. We view it far as far more of a coin flip. Then the odds makers seem to, and taking the points is how we're going to uh, attack this game on Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, look, um, Pat Narduzzi uh, has done a wonderful job, um, and as is he, Eli Holstein, the freshman quarterback for Pitt. Um, and by wonderful, I mean great until I bet on them to cover against Cal, and it, those two schmucks ruined it because the 10 and 1 that I have, that's the lone one that I have over the last three weeks in college football. So, uh, still mad at Pat Narduzzi for that. He's an Italian guy I don't really like right now. That said, I'm not playing against him because uh, I'm mad at him. I'm playing against him here because the numbers tell us that Syracuse uh, is going to be in this game and has a great chance to win it. Now, look, Pitt is top 10 in offense in yards per play, at, but they had 10.6 yards per play against a team like Young, Youngstown State and blew up their numbers against some non-conference foes. In two conference games, they have 5.9 yards per play. Syracuse actually outgains mm. them in three conference games at 6.12. So this offense takes a step back against better competition. Um, and, you know, I think when you look at the, the Syracuse offense, Kyle McCord has thrown for at least 339 yards in each of the six games. Um, so the passing offense is going to be there. Although Pitt is a lot more balanced on offense, you know, you look at Eli Holstein, he's the guy that they're going to have to contain as a runner as well. Um, but I just think between 
this game right here, uh, Syracuse has the edge in a lot of ways that we want at quarterback with more experience. And don't forget, this is now a ranked pit team playing in a standalone Thursday night game or Thursday night game on ESPN and a freshman quarterback. Let's see how well the freshman quarterback handles that kind of pressure, right? Like that's really what this is about here. Um, obviously, Syracuse needs a big win to stay in conference play. But all the pressure here is on Pitt to win this game at home. We'll take the six points with the Syracuse Orange. As Ace Ventura said, what would you know about pressure? Uh, let me tell you about <laughs> uh, let me tell you about Pitt, Mark Zitto. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna draw a line in the sand here, right in front of me. I don't have them power rated as a top five team in the ACC. What do you got to say about that? Um, forget, about top 20. I, forget about being top twenty. Forget about being number nineteen in the country. Rankings. I think your power rankings um, are a thing to be marvelled at and studied uh, for several years now, um, and and really just you know looked at as a as a a, a paragon of of intelligence and and uniqueness. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Joe got you out of there. Here's five yeah, ACC teams better than Pitt: Clemson, Miami, SMU, yes. Virginia Tech. Georgia Tech. They would all be favored on a neutral field over Pitt. Wow. Louisville and Louisville. And so make it six. I got six teams favored over Pitt in the I, ACC. I, uh, I, it, you, you said I was aggressive. I think six is aggressive. I would say four. I would six. say four. Six. I mean, you're, you, you, that SMU offense has really got you excited. It doesn't have me that excited, but I see that you know there. Circadian. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, uh, a couple more things on Pitt. Um, they, you talk about, uh, they, I know I'm all screwed up. Pitt I has know. had mi- miracle comebacks against Cincinnati. They were down 21 in the fourth quarter to Cincinnati and won. They were down double digits against Dub VU with just over three minutes to go. They, You mentioned the Cal game. They held on and won by two. Th- this Pitt team is very fortunate to still be undefeated. I think Syracuse can get them tonight. So we're taking the points. That's our show best bet. Please let us know what you think hey. of that uh, bet. And let us know us your favorite. favorite bets for Thursday as well. Do us a favor. Sprinkle a little bit of that Syracuse, that money on the Syracuse money line. Sprinkle just Whoa, a little bit. Oh, okay. Sprinkle on the money line right? as well. Yes. And when you're um, done, when you're done sprinkling a little on the Syracuse money line, how about you head over to wt.buzz slash mz, wt.buzz slash bp, where there are a number of wonderful plays uh, locked and loaded for the weekend. Mark, would you like to tell the people what you've got going? Ah. <laughs> ah. I will do the opposite. I don't want to do the opposite right now. I've actually been okay for the last couple of weeks. I'm going to stay with the system that's working, but I appreciate the opposite. Uh, look, I have a play in Thursday Night Football. I already have my game one Major League Baseball play up for tomorrow night. And I will be adding a prop to that, I'm pretty sure, for game one of the World Series. So we got a Thursday night game. Uh, We gave out the Cooper Cup. That'll be up as a free play on my page as well. And we have everything ready for locked and loaded for game one of the World Series. WT.buzz slash MZ. I'm not going to bother you with my record because my name is not Brian Power. I got three college plays locked and loaded for Saturday College Football, my top-ranked college football on a 12-2 and run. Thank you, Mark, for reminding me about my record. Mark and I are combined 22-3, and our last 25 college football plays. What a great show this is. What great people we are. I'm also going to have a 5% play in the NFL on Sunday. I believe we should probably get more recognition for how good this show is. We should probably get more recognition for how good this show is. A ticker tape parade, perhaps, in Detroit? Well, okay, some people say the show's over. You know, we have to get enough power. I mean, maybe the people want more. Maybe the people want more of this. I mean, imagine this thing is a whole hour long, where we actually have normal conversations and actually give out information and not just the ball. Now we're listening to one person draw on. Please subscribe. Like, yes. comment, do all those things. Love the comments.